Hi guys, Solid Dubbed here, and today I'm doing a video review on the Vinpox split. Now you might have seen it on Indiegogo, purely because of uh, the amount of backers and the 1.8 million, at least at the time of making this video, that it's raised. It's absolutely insane. Now the monitor can be found for around $200, uh, at least on Indiegogo. Uh, it's RRP, I think, is a lot more at $399. Uh, just bear that in mind, I'm going to be reviewing it at $199, which equates to around £150 in the UK. Bear in mind that you might have shipping charges and import fees to pay. I'm not equating those in the equation, so just just bear that in mind uh, uh, where I'm um, kind of placing this monitor. So this monitor is a 15.6 touchscreen based portable monitor that has USB-C connectivity, works with Android, consoles, PCs and Mac devices. It also has two USB-C outputs which is uh, so inputs which means that it can uh, use multiple inputs in order to do that and you can just switch between them. It's also got mini HDMI, which means you can see right now it's connected to my Windows 10 um, a beast of a PC that's uh, found on the right hand side. You might see it glimpsing on the right. Um, it's got two one watt speakers that are included. It's also, and if I haven't mentioned already, full HD, so 1920 times 1080p, which is brilliant. Um, and then other than that, it's got a 3.5 millimeter jack a headphone output. If you were to output sound via this uh, monitor and you just didn't want to disturb anyone around you, you could plug in your headphones and have that included. So it's pretty much got everything you'd ever want from a portable monitor, from um, the fact that it's a touchscreen monitor or the fact that it has got these different inputs. So without further ado, let's talk about uh, the build quality and design. Now, um, the monitor itself looks fantastic. It's gorgeous, I think. It, it, it's They've done a great job. Um, it's got uh, very thin bezels all the way around, apart from the bottom, it's got just a slightly thicker one. On the left hand side you've got USB-C, you've also got a little button dial. Now the little button dial is used uh, to uh, access the OSD, which I'm just going to show you right now. And if I can get just a monitor just to sit a little bit there, and then I just bring the uh, camera zoom, and you guys will be able to see the pretty comprehensive uh, OSD, which just chose to just hide there. What's going on, on the left hand side, I know, stereo channel and everything. Anyway, um, now the, the OSD itself is accessed by pressing down on a, uh, like a volume dial and then over here you'll be able to see the, the variety of options. So you've got brightness, contrast, black level, sharpness, eco mode, DCR, aspect ratio, color temperature which you can adjust uh, with a red, green and blue and the saturation itself. OSD, you can change transparency and the timer. Uh, you can also mute the, the thing and you can even enable HDR mode. It's HDR, it's not full HDR mode, but nevertheless, Windows does pick this up as a HDR uh, display. Uh, and then uh, finally, I think the, the last menu is just the settings, which allows you to change the low blue light filter and also change the source and the volume, as in um, um, from the speakers or even the headphone jack output. So the OSD has everything that you'd ever want, um, especially from a portable monitor, and the fact that you can access it is, uh, is great. Now, um, the monitors, monitor itself is extremely thin. Um, if I just put it across uh, next to my OnePlus 5T, as you can see over here, um, it is very thin. Now that is currently with its um, stand at the back, in which if I just remove, you'll be able to see it is absolutely incredibly thin. Now my camera is probably gonna struggle to pick this up, but you can see my finger over here. I'm just holding it like this, and you can see uh, the phone. So it is a very thin indeed, uh, which means that it's uh, pretty lightweight. Now. Um, the, the monitor weighs in apparently at 600 odd grams, 650 odd grams, um, check the specs uh, on to, to be sure, but nevertheless it's very lightweight, uh, I think very easy to carry around if you were to put it in a sort of a laptop bag or something you wouldn't have a problem. There's a slight lip over here and that's for the uh, built in um, uh, for, for the jacks and also for the, the speakers. As I mentioned uh, before, there's the, the little button dial over here and a power on and off button, which you can see with a little green LED which turns on. Um, other than that, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you haven't got anything that I should really be shouting about. You do have um, slight sort of like rubber grips at the bottom, which are meant to sort of prevent it from sliding around when it's placed down uh, like so. Now, uh, the, this little um, this little fella over here allows you to um, prop the uh, monitor up or even protect it if you so wish. You can place it on top if you're taking it on the go, which is great to great to see. But um, what's more important over here is when you can prop it up like so, it becomes quite nice for say presenting or if you want it as a second device or if you want to be using it as like a touchscreen 
sort of device, you can do so like that. Now, you might realize that, you know, why is touchscreen not working? Well, for some reason, my Windows 10 device, my machine didn't really like a touchscreen. However, you'll be pleased to know that I have got a Microsoft Surface Go uh, via USB-C, which I'll, I'm just gonna showcase in a bit. Before I showcase that, I wanna talk about its picture uh, quality, as in the display quality. Now, I shoved a calibrator on it um, uh, to try and see how well it would do, and um, I must say, it hasn't got the best results. Now, the overall uh, brightness is around 250 nits, which is perfectly acceptable. Right now, you, I've got the brightness very low, simply for the camera to pick it up. But you'll be able to see over here um, that it hits a, or well, hopefully able to see that it's a 1100 uh, to one contrast ratio, is very acceptable. Viewing angles are good. When you do shift, you do notice a slight sort of, um, uh, not dimming, but um, you do notice it not being, as bright as you would expect, kind of like a not kind of TN shift, but nevertheless, colors don't shift, but um, you do notice to be a little bit duller unless you're sitting uh, dead onto it. Uh, in terms of color accuracy, it is pretty poor uh, to the sRGB standard. Um, it doesn't really hit that claimed uh, amount. Um, I, I got it to hit uh, 59. 0.4% of the sRGB standard, which if I zoom in over here, you might be able to see. I don't know if my camera's picking up, but never mind. 59% of the sRGB standard with color accuracy of the average LTE hitting around 5.4 to a maximum of 22.75. You can see over here, it is pretty way off in terms of colors. However, does that really matter? Well, if you're gonna be color, uh, color grading, or sorry, video grading, color editing, uh, picture editing, shall I say, with, with colors, God, I can't even speak, then you will need a monitor which is accurate, and this is not that monitor. In fact, most portable monitors I've come across aren't very accurate out the box. You might need to calibrate them in order to make them do that. So bear that in mind that out of the box, it might not have the best calibration, at least to the sRGB standard um, and uh, from what I shoved to it and on user mode. So I just bear that in mind, user mode, 100% uh, brightness I had it set at, uh, and that's the that's the results I got to the sRGB uh, color gamut tests. So picture quality on a calibrator might not look pretty. However, actually in person, I must say it looks very nice. Its display is it is vivid. It's uh, not overly saturated. It's not overly washed out. It's got decent viewing angles. It's absolutely perfect for for those who want to set it up next to another uh, next to another PC or another monitor and have it running as a secondary uh, display. The fact that you can also use this um, with your games consoles, now bear in mind it's a 60 hertz panel and it's not got the best sort of input lag um, uh, and, and sort of response time, but it's perfectly acceptable if you're a casual gamer or if you're a person who's just gonna be stro uh, um, uh, scrolling around. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. In terms of um, how um, how it does throughout uh, different um, different images and different colors, as you can see right now, I'm just gonna be flicking through a couple of backgrounds. Um, I must say I'm, I'm very impressed. Now, <laughs> for some reason, it's changing it on my, um, on my main display. There we go, it's every other one. So in this display, for in this picture, sorry, you got a nice sort of like contrast between the the the, the dark blue um, over here and um, the, the, the land. No problems whatsoever. Not not something that I would be overly concerned about. Here you got really deep blacks at the bottom over here, whilst the whites are are pretty well done. So, in a nutshell, I must say picture quality is pretty good. Um, Especially for a portable monitor, I have no sort of complaints. Now I did say I was gonna connect it via USB-C, um, and I'm gonna show you that via the Microsoft Surface Go after I just uh, log in. Um, so what I'm gonna do over here is have it plugged in via USB, uh, USB-C only. So I just wanna show over here that you can use it via USB-C without need of power. So I'm gonna unplug the monitor. As you can see, it switches off. And then I've got USB-C, and that's my PC picking it up, by the way. Um, Plug in USB-C and I know you can see my, my arms rather than the monitor and it should, there you go, pick up. Now what I'll showcase over here is, is also its touchscreen functionalities which um, are on the Surface Go, it's kind of having a, it's just not liking the, uh, god, let's just drag this across. <laughs> it's quite hard working on multi-screens, there we go, if I just open that. And you guys can see that it's fully a touchscreen monitor and has that 10 point touch. If I just open up paint as well, if I just find it, 
um, you guys will be able to see the sort of touch input that it has. Best drawing school, draw, drawing skills .eu. Um, If I try and open it up, God, it's going to be absolutely mental. But I'm just trying to show you the different touch that it has. You can, oh, you, you can't really see it, but it picks up all the multiple touch inputs. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. I must say I'm very impressed with the monitor. I've got no complaints. It does exactly what it says on the tin, and it's great for versatility. Um, that's, that is it really. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, check in the description below for more information. Let me know.